Hello and welcome to the second video in my Arducopter Pixhawk build 2023. Now this isn't the first one in the series, the first one's already been shot, so go and check that out. Link to the entire series in the description down below. Last time we did all of the basic setup of the flight controller, we flashed the Holybro Pixhawk 6C, we set up things like the radio, did the accelerometer calibration, plugged in the GPS and other pieces too. In this video, we're going to complete the setup and actually install all of the hardware that we've already done into the frame. The frame I'm using is a Holybro X500 V2 frame. It's a nice large quadcopter and it'll be useful for me to have this set up because I'm hoping to get things like gimbals in to test in the near future. And it's also a chance for me to explain all the different steps that you go through to set this up. Now, I would always recommend if you're interested in doing this, Although this series is absolutely aimed at those of you that haven't done a lot of this before, particularly with a Pixhawk system, do check out the ardupilot.org website and all the information in there. That is the gold standard when it comes to explaining how to set everything up, how everything works, how to tweak stuff, and how to troubleshoot problems as well. So by the end of this, everything's going to be sorted, everything's going to be connected, the motors will be tested, it's ready to go to the field and do the first flight. Also going to include an optional piece in here that you don't have to do, get lots of questions about telemetry radios, I have these telemetry radios from Holybro as well, so while I've got these in, we'll set them up. These are going to allow me to have a control of the model via the PC even when it's in the air. So time goes to everything down below, so if you're interested in one specific bit, you can jump to that piece. So the next thing we need to do before we install all of this stuff that we set up last time in the last video into the quadcopter, we need to install this little thing here. Now this is a power module. It's gonna plug into your flight battery and it's gonna plug into the power distribution unit that's gonna send the power to the ESCs on the four arms. Now this is the Holybro version here. This is the Holybro PM02 version three power module. This will handle 60 amps continuously, but can handle up to 120 amps for small periods of time. Now this does a number of things. First of all, it is in between the battery and the power distribution board, but it also measures the voltage and the current that's flowing through these wires. So that can be reported via a wire to your flight controller. Very handy for keeping track of how much flight battery you have left. And also it provides all the different voltages that the Pixhawk needs to operate. However, we need to set this up in ArduPilot because there's lots of different versions of the power module. Now, we can set it up without plugging it in, but on the Pixhawk 6C, and most of the Pixhawks will have something like this, it says power one and power two, and you can have redundant power supplies. It's the kind of cool stuff that Pixhawk lets you do over non-Pixhawk flight controllers that you can run RD Pilot on. So we're just gonna plug that into power one, and we are going to then connect this to the computer and let's do the setup so that RD Pilot knows what power module it's going to be dealing with. So here in Mission Planner we're connected to the flight controller and this time we need to go into optional hardware, scroll all the way down and then we need to find battery monitor. We are going to set the first one up because we only have one of them and you need to set it up as this. Set the monitor type to analog voltage and current set the sensor type to the Holybro power module, and you can the hardware version can either be blank or uh, you can set it to something like Durandal Zealot H734. You need to make sure there's a couple of things in here. By setting those, these numbers are kind of set. The voltage divider is set to 18.182, which is what you need to check that it's set at, and the amperes per volt is 36, 0.364. If both of those two numbers are in there, we're in really good shape. Now, with that set, we can disconnect. We can unplug the flight controller from the computer, so it's now unpowered. Let's unplug it completely. And then what we can do is we can now power this from a battery. So let me grab a battery, and let's plug this into the power module. And as we plug it in, we should see everything burst into life as the power module now supplies everything that the Pixhawk needs. That looks very promising, doesn't it? Right, so let's plug this into the computer because now 
we should be able to see the voltage that the PixHawk is monitoring. So what we're going to do is we'll click on Connect in Mission Planner. And here on the main screen, we can see that the battery is 15.25 volts. I would just double check and with a voltmeter just on the battery to make sure that's exactly what it is and confirm everything is happy. But that looked really, really good. I don't want to worry about the other stuff that's on the screen right at the moment. We're not going to worry about that at all. What we are going to do is we are going to carry on now because now we have all the pieces on the bench. We're ready to actually start installing things onto the quadcopter frame. So here we are looking at the top deck of the Holybro X500 V2 frame. Now I have assembled and put on the GPS mount that comes as part of the GPS kit and I've also pulled out these two foam pads. They're quite squishy and they're in the kit that you get with the Pixhawk 6C. Now these are going to be vibration isolating because there is quite a lot of vibration that comes in a frame like this. You don't want it to go all into the flight controller. Other thing I'll point out on here is that there is some very big arrows. So this is going to be the front of the model and we need everything, all the other arrows on the Pixhawk and the GPS to point in the same direction. The really nice thing that I like about this particular frame is hopefully you can see here that the motors are all kind of in the corners. So on the top, when you actually build this frame, I'll put a link down below to that video that shows you how to put this together. It's pretty easy and straightforward. But it does mean that it's very hard to get this the wrong way around because these motors here actually match all of the information that's already in RD Pilot. So it's pretty difficult to get it wrong. All of the, the stuff that's in the arms is already plugged into the power distribution board underneath. And I've also installed that power unit that we just set up into that underneath piece as well. So now that's ready for the battery to plug into. The only other thing I'll point out while I'm doing this is I like the way that Holy Bro also actually put little tags here on each of the motor connections. That's going to make the connecting up to test all the motors really simple. My top tip with this is that if you get these kind of pads to use in the kit, use them. For everything else that's going to be connected onto the frame, I like this 3M double-sided tape. In fact, it's funnily enough, by sheer fluke, it's the same kind of brand and type that is already included by Holybro on their particular things. I like this 3M double-sided foam tape. It's great to attach everything else. So the first thing we need to do is to attach these two pads to the bottom of the flight controller. The flight controller is then going to be fit slap bang, I would suggest, in the middle of the deck like that. And the GPS is going to go onto the stand. Again, it's using these double-sided foam pads. Make sure that the arrows are all pointing in the same direction because we may do a redo a compass calibration, but that's going to work. With that compass on there, I'd probably then use a little bit of uh, strain relief, a simple cable tie, just to make sure it's going to be okay. And then I'm going to double foam tape the receiver on like that. And when it's all stuck on, it looks a little bit like this. The installation of the hardware on a nice big frame like this is incredibly simple. But do take your time and do make sure that everything is nicely installed and fitted so we're ready for the next step. So the last part of installing all of this into the frame is that these little PWM modules that plug into the bottom of the Pixhawk 6C are where we're going to plug in the motors. Now, here we have it all nicely labeled PWM out. So you can have two of these on the Holy Bro 6C. We're only going to need one because we only need to plug in four different things, and those are the four motors. Now, the only thing that's on here that isn't obvious is which way round you install it because you have all of these connectors. The trick is on most flight controllers, there is a little symbol that shows you which is the negative pin, which is one side. The middle pin is normally a voltage pin and the top pin is normally a signal pin. On something like this, it's relatively easy to spot. 
because you see all those little notches at the top. Some DuPont servo style connectors that you get have those little notches and those notches always indicate the signal side. So now we know that we can plug in all of these little connectors here. So let me grab one. This is motor four and we know that because Holy Bro has very kindly written that on. Although when I'm building frames, I tend to write the motor number on, uh, on here using a little uh, bronze Sharpie pen. So this is gonna to need to be plugged in. So we need to find PWM four and then we need to plug that in the right way around so that the white cable is at the top, the black cable's at the bottom. And then we just need to work our way through. This is M2. So that's going to go on the second set of pins like that. This one is M1. And again, this is easy because it's all labeled up. And all I'm doing is I'm just following the motor convention. We're gonna test the motors in a minute to make sure they're all working. Now, the other thing you'll notice here, these cables that are coming from the motors only have a ground and signal pin. On some ESCs that you find, they'll also have a red pin in the middle. That is typically for the ESC to send five volts back to power things. We don't need that connected in this instance because the Pixhawk is going to be powered from the power module that we've already set up. So this is motor three, and hopefully if we've done this right, there's a space for motor three. Here we go, we'll plug him in there. And now with all the motors connected, we'll just tidy up this wiring and tuck it away under here, and then we're ready to plug it back in and do some motor testing. So now we've got the motors plugged in, we need to test them. Now, obviously the props are off for this. We want to make sure that we don't accidentally uh, hurt ourselves. We are gonna run the motors at low power, but we're gonna check it. Couple of things before we plug the battery in for the first time. First and foremost is I would flip the model over and plug an ohm meter onto the terminals of the battery. Make sure that it initially goes to a low number and then very quickly goes higher. If it does, then it means that we're ready to plug it in. If it stays at a very low number near zero, then stop and check all your wiring. The other thing that we've done is we've gone into the full parameter tree, plugged this back in and we've changed the ESC protocol. The ESCs that are on this model are capable of a digital protocol. Digital protocols are fantastic because not only does it allow the motors to respond more quickly, which gives a better flight, it also means that you don't have to do the calibration step. Now, as the ESCs in this particular model from Holybro, check the manual for the ESCs that you're using does support D-Shot, we're gonna set D-Shot up in RD Pilot. So what we need to do is go into the full parameter tree. Then we need to find MOT underscore PWM underscore type and set that to five. These ESCs are capable of DSHOT 600, but I'm just setting them for DSHOT 300, which should be loads. And then write that back and then we are ready for the test. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and do a motor test. The way it should work is when I click the button, the motor should turn in sequence with the front right turning first, then the back right, back left, front left, and it should go around in a big circle. If it does, that's great. We're also checking that they're turning in the right direction. Now, the nice thing about this particular frame is that on the top, it does actually show you which motor is which, and it also shows you the direction it should be running. Now, the way that Holybro manufactured this frame is actually very nice. It's one of the reasons I'm using it in the series is that if you have put it together properly, everything is gonna work, but it pays to double check that that's the case. So let's plug this in from the battery and let it power up. And then let's plug it into the computer and click on connect. Then in the setup tab, we're going to go into optional hardware and we're gonna zoom down until we find the motor test, there it is. And what we can do is we can test all the motors in sequence. Now, because we have it with the D-Shot protocol, we don't have to go through any of the issues with things like calibration. When I click test in sequence, we should see them run. And we're gonna check that they run in that sequence. It goes in a clockwise direction starting over here and they turn in the right direction. So let's try it, click. That's the right direction. Hey, that is two. 
So is that. And so is that. So the motors are good. We're in great shape. That means that the motors are cabled up correctly. The Pix Hawk is talking to them and we are ready for the next step. Now, if you try this on your particular build and you find that one of the motors isn't turning in the right direction, then I would swap any two of the three wires that go from the motor to the ESC. That is the guaranteed way to reverse the spin of that particular motor. So a really important thing to set up is fail safe so that if something happens with the radio or the connection or the receiver or the receiver's connection to the Pixhawk, the flight controller knows that something horrible has happened and it will fail safe. I.e. in this particular instance, because we have a GPS and everything on top of the model that we're building, that it flies home safely. Now, the first thing we need to do with this is to go on to the radio that we're using and to set the fail safe condition for the receiver that we have for null pulses. Now that means that when there is a disconnection between the radio and the receiver, it'll stop sending pulses to the flight controller and the flight controller will be very easily be able to see that something horrible has happened. So here in Mission Planner, let's just test that that's going to work. And you can see here on the left hand side, it says disarmed. Don't worry about the fact it says pre arm battery one low voltage failsafe. That's only there because I don't have it powered from the main flight battery, but that's not going to stop it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the radio off and we'll see if that's going to work. Receiver still connected. So I'm going to have to press enter on the radio to turn it off because it's telling me that it can't turn off. It's dangerous with the receiver still connected. And immediately we see fail safe appear here, which is fantastic. So if we now go into the setup tab into fail safe, we can tell the flight controller what to do when it detects a fail safe. So we have a couple of things here. We can say when it needs to come home, the battery voltage and other things. But I would say always RTL, which basically means that it's going to come back to us and it's going to land. It's really important that we check that that failsafe stuff works. There's a lot more that you can do with failsafe. And actually, when you're flying autonomous missions, if you get in a situation where the copter loses connection to the radio, you can set it up that it still continues to fly the mission. Now, I'm not going to cover that here, but just be aware that all that is detailed in the documentation. Now, the next thing to talk about is something that's entirely optional. You'll notice that there is no cable going between the Pixhawk and the frame that we've just built and the computer. What there is instead are these two little things here. There's one here in the bottom left hand corner and there's one here as well. These are telemetry radios. These mean that you can connect to Mission Planner and I can set everything up and I can continue to talk to the copter, get telemetry information, even control the copter as it's flying away. And these two radios essentially just act as a big long USB cable. Now you don't need this to fly one of these things. You can just set it up and fly it from the radio as normal. However, lots of uh, kind of enthusiastic amateurs and professional hobbyists as well as professionals actually use these kind of radios. To set them up is now incredibly simple. It used to be really, really difficult, but now it's easy. Now these are the Holy Bro ones, and I have plugged one of them into Telemetry 1 on top of the Pixhawk. And the other one is just plugged into my USB port here on the side of the computer. And because they're all pre-configured and they're ready to go, they're kind of talking to each other. Now, there's only a couple of things that you have to be aware of for this. First of all, is that you always, when you connect, make sure you've got the right COM port selected, because this is going to appear as a different COM port. And also that you use 57600 as the board that you connect with. Now, because we have the radio plugged into telemetry one here on the model, we can figure out what telemetry one is as far as RDU pilot is concerned. And we can see here in the RDU pilot or information that serial one maps to telemetry one on the model. So I need to set up serial one. So in mission planner in the full parameter tree, if I just search for serial one underscore, then that's going to show me all of the settings for that. And what I had to do is to set it so that this radio is being talked to at 57 
which is 57600 board, which is what these radios talk to everything at. And the serial protocol is set for two, with, which is Mavlink 2. And with that set, I just plugged the other radio in here, made sure that I had the right COM port selected for the radio that was plugged in, and that the speed was 57600, and we're connected. And now that means that as I move the model, you'll see it on the screen, there we are, I'm getting that information back of how the model is moving, the artificial horizon is all tickety-boo. Now the other cool thing is using this setup, you can also then fly the model, you can actually plug USB joysticks and things into Mission Planner and you can fly with it on that way as well. So you can use these as radio control stuff. Now I'm not gonna cover all that again, loads of it is covered in the Ardu Pilot documentation. I just want to show you very quickly that this is an option that if you wanted to do those kind of things, you can add, and it's pretty easy now with this stuff too. So there's one last thing that I would do before I go to the field, and that is check that I can get a GPS lock and that the model is going to arm. Now the copter is plugged in, it's powered by uh, the battery, and it's also plugged into the computer via the USB cable. So here on the computer, we can see everything live as it's all working. And the key thing is here in the screen, it says disarmed. Now I have everything set up, so it's all fixed. So when I flick the arm switch, we should see it say armed on the screen. And there we are, it says armed and the motors are all spinning and I can disarm it using the switch. That means that we're in a good place. We can also see here on the screen, it says it has a 3D fix. The fact that it arms means that the last thing to do would be to put the props on. We're kind of ready to go to the field and give it a test hover. However, what tends to happen at this point is you flick that switch and rather than it arming, it gives you an error. And there have been a number of things that I've had to tweak in here. One of the errors that I got was talking about the fact that the battery one was unhealthy. And that was because the way that the power module was being read by Ardu Pilot was a little bit wrong. Now this is actually covered in this web page here. This talks about power module setup on the Holybro website. And what it says down here is that if you're gonna use it with a Pixhawk 6C, if it's plugged into the power one port, which mine is, you need to set battery voltage pin to eight and battery current pin to four. So what I did was come in here into the full parameter tree and then search for bat underscore volt underscore pin and made sure that was set to eight and saved it. And similarly, also search for bat underscore current underscore pin and set that to four. Doing both of those things meant that that problem went away and I could get that issue off the screen. Another very common one that you tend to bump into is the fact that you'll get an FS underscore THR underscore value error, thro throttle failsafe, basically. Now, what that's about is that when it gives you something like that on here in the screen, it's actually telling you exactly where the problem is. So FS THR value is the thing that we need to look at in the full parameter tree. But if we go into setup, go into mandatory hardware and look at the radio calibration screen, we can see that the minimum value that the throttle goes to, because this is an edge TX radio, these tend to go a little bit further than all the things like spectrum. The minimum value it goes down to is 982. Now, the way it works is that the FSTHR value needs to be at least 10 lower than that. So remember 982, let's go into config, let's go into full parameter tree, search for FS underscore THR underscore value. And what I've done is I've set it more than 10 lower than that lowest value that we have. That is another common one that you'll bump into and that will get rid of that error as well. The last one that I uh, had a problem with was in this particular setup, we have a safety switch. Now, Ardu Pilot in the old days really used to like a safety switch, and this was usually part of the GPS assembly because you could only arm the copter if you not only had armed it on the radio, but you also, before you did that, you had to press the safety switch. This setup that we have here, the Pixhawk 6C, with this M8N compass 
from Holybro does actually have a safety switch. It's the LED on the GPS, but I disable it. What you need to do is come into config again, full parameter tree, and you need to set BRD safety enable to zero, which basically disables the safety switch. And that means then you can arm it. So with those three things done, I now can flick my arming switch and it will arm and it's ready to go. So that now means I can put the props on, make sure you're observing the correct rotation for each of the props. The props at the back right and the front left need to be in a clockwise direction and the other two need to be in counterclockwise. And when you've done that, you've pretty much done all the setup that you need to do to take it for its first test flight. So there we have it, it is all together. We're now ready to go to the field and to try our first couple of tests. Really important when you're on the bench to test that you can get that GPS lock and that you can arm it and you can see it say arm in the mission planner screen. Again, really important to do that before you go to the field. It's always heartbreaking if you've missed that step to go all the way to the field or into the garden or wherever it is that you are allowed to fly and to try and arm the thing and it doesn't work because we're not going to have to wait for that GPS to lock and for it to be ready for, to be able to take off and everything to work. So join me next time while I'll go through that process of how to do that initial flight, how you do things like the arming and talk about some of the beeps and boops that this thing's going to make when it is booting up and getting things like that GPS lock. So hopefully I'll see you in that third video of the series and we'll get it flying in the air. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.